Hello, this is Yashwin. In this video, I'll be solving paper 2 variant 1, October number 2020, Science 700 Biology. Question 1a. Figure 1.1 is a diagram of a human chromosome at a stage in mitosis. 1. The paragraph describes the structure of mitosis, the structure of chromosome shown in figure 1.1. Complete the paragraph using the most appropriate term in each space provided. So the chromosome shown in figure 1.1 has two genetically identical uh, sister chromatids. And these each uh, single length of this is a chromatid joined at a centromere, which is this region over here. The chromosome is composed of two DNA molecules, each wrapped around proteins known as histone proteins. Two state one stage during mitosis when a chromosome would appear is shown. So uh, the stage before anaphase where they are not pulled apart. So that could be prophase or metaphase. Three state the role of ATP in the process of mitosis. ATP is required to grow the spindle fibers, moving uh, centrioles to the uh, nuclear poles and moving sister chromatids apart after they have been aligned at the center. So all of those movements require ATP. You can write any two of them. B prokaryotes divide by a process known as binary fission. Figure 1.2 shows some of the stages in binary fission. So in binary fission, the cell grows in size, uh, DNA replicates so that each new cell that forms has, has its own complete set of DNA. And then a cell wall forms as well because this is a uh, prokaryote. With reference to figure 1.2, identify two events that occur during binary fission that do not occur during mitosis in human cells. Uh, during mitosis, we only have uh, four stages and growth, uh, which is uh, the increase in size of cell and DNA replication is, uh, is not a part of that. Also, there um, in mitosis, cell wall does not form. Those are three of which you'll only have to write two. To A, figure 2.1 shows the molecular structure of a triglyceride molecule. One draw a circle around an ester bond shown in figure 2.1. So this is a it is an ester bond over here. To name the type of reaction used to produce a triglyceride from its components. So the formation of ester bonds from a uh, glycerol molecule and three fatty acids would be condensation reaction because uh, water molecules form in the process. And for each uh, single ester bond that forms, a water molecule forms as well. So a total of three S, uh, water molecules would be produced. B. Lipases are enzymes that digest triglycerides in the lumen of human intestine. These enzymes are released by exocytosis from intestinal epithelial cells. 1. Underline all the terms from the list that are used to describe these lipases. So these are macromolecules because they are large biological molecules and extracellular enzymes because they are released out of uh, cells. Enzymes are globular proteins. So the uh, fibrous protein over here is not an answer and they're also not polysaccharides because uh, lipases are made up of amino acids and not monosaccharides. Scientists have found that treating milk with lipase can improve its taste. The scientists carried out an experiment to determine the effect of lipase activity on triglyceride found in milk. Lipase was immobilized in alginate beads. The pH of a known volume of milk was adjusted to pH 8 by adding an alkali. The beads were then mixed with this milk in a beaker. The pH of the reaction mixture was recorded over a period of 24 hours. And the results are shown in figure 2.2. So as you can see, as the time increases, the pH of reaction mixture decreases. And this decrease is fastest initially. So between, uh, I'd say, 1 to 2 hours. And then this decrease in pH, uh, the rate of this decrease in pH slows down as uh, time goes and finally it becomes constant so the pH no longer decreases around 18 uh, around after 18 hours 
Now that means the rate of reaction of um, hydrolysis of triglyceride is fastest because uh, as triglycerides are broken down, they form fatty acids, which are the reason that uh, the pH decreases. And that, that breakdown or hydrolysis gets slower and slower with time, which indicates um, slow, the rate of hydrolysis getting slower. And then finally, um, hydrolysis stops. So that is all indicated by this graph over here. Figure 2.2 shows that the pH decreases steeply and then after 18 hours remains constant. To calculate the time taken for pH to decrease from pH 6.6 to 6.3. Okay, I'll zoom in over here and let's find out, find out the values. So the, at uh, pH 6.6, the time is around 2 hours over here and 6.3 has to be halfway between 6.4 and 6.2 so that would be that would correspond to this x over here this cross over here which has um a corresponding time value of six hours and that would mean the time taken between two to six hours is four Three explain the results shown in figure 2.2. So as I mentioned earlier, the hydrolysis of um, triglycerides produces fat, fatty acids. And since they act as acids by donating protons, they cause a decrease in temperature. And this is uh, the decrease in temperature is the steepest or the fastest initially because there is the highest concentration of substrate um, during the initial stages of the reaction. and as the reaction proceeds, the substrate concentration decreases, which in turn decreases the rate of reaction until eventually all of the substrate has been used up. And you'll have to mention all of that. For the scientists repeated the experiment using a higher concentration of lipase, all other variables remained constant. Predict how an increase in concentration of lipase would affect the results of experiment. So increasing the temp uh, concentration of lipase means there is going to be a uh, there are going to be more active sites. That means more enzyme substrate complex would form and they would form faster. And that means not only would the uh, all of the product form faster, the rate of reaction would also be greater. And that means this plateau over here would be reached in a shorter interval of time since all of the uh, sub substrate would be used up much earlier and this slope over here would be even steeper indicating a faster rate of reaction. 3A circulatory system of mammals is a double circulation. One explain what is meant by the term double circulation and that means blood passes twice through heart in one complete circulation. One is the systemic circulation around the body and the other one is primary circulation. So uh, the blood passing through the lungs to get oxygenated. Two figure 3.1 is a photograph showing one valve in the mammalian heart. So these over here, uh, okay. Identify the structure labeled A in figure 3.1 and describe their role during the cardiac, during the cardiac cycle. Uh, the structure represented by A over here are tendinous cords. These are connected to the cusps of the atrioventricular valve. What they do is they connect papillary muscles to the atrioventricular valve. Atrioventricular valves need to be opened or inverted into the heart during the diastole so that blood flows from the atria into the ventricle, ventricles. And they also need to be... Um, close during the ventricular systole so that when blood is pumped out of the ventricles it does not flow back into the atria rather it goes into the uh, arteries b the endocardium is a thin layer of tissue lining the chambers of the heart a serious condition called endocarditis results in bacteria results if bacteria infect this tissue endocarditis is treated with a combination of antibiotics this increases the effectiveness of the treatment and reduces uh, the risk of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Figure 3.1 shows the action of two antibiotics used together to treat endocarditis. So we have 
gentamicin, which binds permanently to bacterial ribosomes. And so this would play a role in the trans, this would uh, play some role in inhibiting the translation of mRNA to a polypeptide. Penicillin G inhibits an enzyme involved in cell wall synthesis. One with reference to table 3.1 explain why treating endocarditis with a combination of gentamicin and penicillin G reduces, reduces the risk of developing antibiotic resistance. So first off, using a combination ensures that even if some bacteria are res resistant, have developed resistance to either one of those, to either one of the antibiotics, the other one would make sure that uh, none of the bacteria survive and it would kill them. And and second, you can describe the mode of action of two of them, of the antibiotics. To describe how the bacteria that cause endocarditis can become resistant to gentamicin. Let's start with why resistant or resistance in bacteria arises. That could be due to not completing the antibiotic course for endocarditis. That now they now have a gene which makes them resistant to gentamicin, and then they can transfer this gene to bacteria of the same species by vertical transmission uh, during binary fusion, or they can transfer this uh, gene for resistance to bacteria of different species by horizontal transmission through a tube during conjugation by transferring their plasmids. 4a figure 4.1 is a scanning electron micrograph of a section of a cell wall in a living plant tissue cytoplasmic strands from part of its structure w a cytoplasm passes cell walls through plasmodesmata which can be observed in the form of um, holes one identify the structures labeled w so these are plasmodesmata to describe the function of the structure W, it allows the movement of substances um, between, between adjacent plant cells without them having to cross cell walls. So that would be uh, through simplest pathway. B viruses can infect plant cells. One outline the key structural features of a virus. A virus must have a protein code and some sort of genetic material. Too many plant viruses can travel through the plant to enter companion cells in the phloem tissue. The viruses then travel with assimilates in the phloem sac to other areas of the plant. Explain the mechanism that allows assimilates and viruses to travel through phloem sieve tubes to other areas of the plant. Essentially, you have to describe the translocation of assimilates from source to sink. You start with the movement of assimilates or sucrose and they diffuse from companion cell into phloem sieve tube uh, through the plasmodesmata in the phloem sieve tube and due to this uh, this uh, due to this solute moving into phloem sieve tube the water potential of uh, water potential inside phloem sieve tube decreases and this causes water to move into the sieve tube by osmosis which increases the hydrostatic pressure at source of a gradient of hydrostatic pressure is created between source and sink because sink has a lower hydrostatic pressure. This gradient is what causes mass flow from source to sink by translocation and you're supposed to outline the entire process. Question 5a figure 5.1 is a photomicrograph of a section through the lungs showing a bronchus and some alveoli. Um, one state the function of tissue X. So X over here is cartilage and tissue Y over here is epithelium, which contains cilia and goblet cells. X supports the bronchus by preventing its collapsing during inhalation when pressure inside bronchus decreases. To describe how the uh, distribution of tissue X in trachea differs from that shown in figure 5.1. Since this is um, bronchus, there is going to be irregular plates of cartilage, whereas trachea has incomplete rings of cartilage. Three, describe how the epithelial tissue uh, Y is adapted for its function. Y, again, as mentioned, has ciliated cells and goblet cells. Starting with goblet cells, they release uh, the secret mucus, which traps any pathogen or dust particles 
present in the airways and those would then be swept away by uh, cilia in Y away from the breathing surfaces up to the throat to be swallowed. B figure 5.2 is a photo photograph of two African elephants, Lexodonta africana. One describe the difference in surface area to volume ratio between the elephant, uh, the adult elephant and the baby elephant shown in figure 5.2 because the adult elephant is greater in size. It has a smaller surface area to volume ratio than the baby elephant. To suggest why animals such as elephant require a gas exchange system. Being multicellular means that the surface area to volume ratio is too slow for oxygen to be received by cells by diffusion alone. So gas exchange system um, connected by with the circulatory system supplies this gives this oxygen supply to all of these cells in the body faster. Without these systems, the oxygen supply would not be fast enough to satiate the energy requirements of all of the of the many cells in any multicellular organism. Three, the feet of elephants are protected by structures under the skin known as cushions. The cushions are made up of a large number of cells surrounded by connective tissues containing many uh, connected connective tissue containing many fibers of collagen. The fibers help to maintain the structure of the cushion. The collagen fibers are made of collagen molecules. Describe the structure of a collagen molecule. Each collagen molecule is composed of three polypeptides that are curled into helical shapes and they bond together to form a triple helix. So these bonds are essentially hydrogen bonds that form between R groups of the three polypeptides Every third amino acid in each of the three polypeptides is glycine, which is the smallest amino acid. And due to its small uh, size, glycine allows closest possible packaging of the three polypeptides. And due to this close packaging, the collagen molecule has strength. For the cushion in the foot is very strong and is able to resist extreme large extremely large forces acting on it due to the large mass of the elephant suggest how the structure of a collagen fiber can help the cushion resist these large forces so each uh, collagen fibers form due to formation of covalent bonds forming between collagen molecules that lie parallel to each other and these many strong bonds give collagen fiber their high tensile strength Six A mutations in body cells can sometimes result in a tumor. Some tumors are cancerous. One outline how mutations can result in the development of a tumor. So tumor would be uh, caused due to uncontrolled growth of cells, and you're supposed to explain why that occurs, uh, how that occurs due to mutation. In these mutations, proton genes are converted to oncogenes, and these are the genes responsible for forming tumor. And also tumor suppressor genes are switched off, which eventually leads to uncontrolled cell division. Two tumor cells have antigens on their cell surface membrane that are not present on tumor cells. These antigens are a result of gene mutations and are known as tumor-specific antigens. One type of TSA differs in structure from, uh, from the protein found on the uh, cell surface membrane of non-tumor cells by a single amino acid. Explain how a gene mutation could result in formation of this TSA. You're supposed to explain how change in a gene mutation or change in base sequence of DNA can lead to difference of a single amino acid. Amino acids in any polypeptide are coded by this gene, uh, by this nucleotide sequence. That means if any uh, the sequence of nucleotide changes mRNA transcribed is going to be different, which means it means it hydrogen bonds with a different tRNA carrying a different amino acid. B immunotherapy is a form of treatment for cancer which aims to stimulate the immune system to destroy tumor cell tumor cells. One form of immunotherapy for cancer cells uses a vaccine which contains one specific type of TSA. 
One, describe how vaccination with a specific type of TSA could lead to destruction of tumor cells by the lymphocytes in the body. So out of helper, lymph helper T lymphocytes and killer T lymphocytes, killer T lymphocytes are responsible for destruction themselves, whereas uh, helper T lymphocytes use cytokines to stimulate other immune responses. So you're only supposed to um, describe the mode of action of killer T lymphocytes. As soon as any uh, a foreign antigen enters the body, it is um, recognized as foreign by their antigen presentation. This stimulates a, an immune response, which means killer T cells, which have receptors complementary in shape to specific TSA bind to them and release toxic substances like hydrogen peroxide to kill these tumor cells. Two vaccines that contain tumor cells instead of ATSA are being developed for use during immunotherapy. Tumor cells are removed from a patient's body and used in a vaccine for the patient suggest one advantage and one disadvantage of using a patient's tumor cells in a vaccine rather than a TSA. Now, because these tumor cells are taken from um, a specific patient and used to treat the same patient, that means when those are used, when those are used to create vaccines, the vaccine is going to stimulate an Im immune response that would be specific to the uh, TSA present in tumor cells in the person person's body, which has a higher chance of um, success in killing those cells containing TSA. And because this treatment is personalized, that means it would have to be different for every single patient, which would make it expensive. That is it. We are done with this paper. Thank you for watching.